This is Elliot Forbes, and on today's episode of The Elliot Ash Show, I'm joined by Kai Wilson. We're just meeting, my name is Elliot Forbes and on this channel you'll find hair, beard and grooming tips for the modern man. The Elliot Ash Show is a place where I talk to industry experts and they give us a deeper insight into the men's grooming world. From the outside it seems that Kai Wilson has done things very differently within the industry. Everyone that you talk to talks very highly of him, which is why I was so keen to get to know a bit more about him and his salon The Social, which is where today's episode is filmed. So Kai, you've had a very interesting background, obviously hairdressing. Tell me your story about how you got into men's hair and how that all evolved. So being in a hair salon and like and earning a, a very low income from it, like the main thing for me was like the drive of trying to make money outside of work. Because that was that was what I was hungry for at the start. Mm. And I used to brag to my mates that I could cut the hair for a fiver and like I used to do it in my mum dad's kitchen and like I cut so many people's ears and like took so many moles off and all that and like yeah and, and then it started developing into like 10 pound 15 pounds and 20 20 pound 25 pound and then the, the boys started coming around to my house for me to put wax in before a saturday night out for a fiver do you know like and that was because one i was like doing women's hair as well because i wanted to spend time with them which was cool but i got my nights out paid for which was like awesome but um but that's really why i started doing it and then when i actually got taught how to do it i was very confident that I was able to run a column with men's and I was very lucky also that my um, first salon, so it was Daniel Gray and Kendall in the Lake District, um, gave me the opportunity to work on a Saturday doing men's hair and that, then they started throwing in the cheeky female um, to do, but yeah, it was primarily doing men's hair on a Saturday, that's what built my column, which is cool, but I reckon, yeah, at the start it was all about building that coin up and then, then my passion for it came and I... I really, I wasn't allowed to use clippers, I wasn't allowed to use uh, thin scissors, I wasn't allowed to use cutthroat razor because we haven't been taught in cutthroat razor uh, using a cutthroat. And then I put myself on a course, so when I did a two, two day course, shaving course on that myself, which I paid for. Brilliant. And then, yeah, when I come back, you know, you, you start doing necklines and that's what puts you up another level because it's like a detail that not many people get. Obviously then you can start doing the cheeks without even going into doing like beards and stuff. Um, and then the clipper trend was there, so I started using clippers in the salon, which we weren't meant to, um, other than like little net trimmers. Okay. Thinness scissors, anything, I think any tools as well like, should be used if they're being used to create that, that one technique like, and that one look, um, rather than saying you can't use that. Like, use whatever, do you know? Like. Yeah, and I think there's, there's a, sort of almost a snobbery with thinning scissors and clippers, isn't there, that then, as, been forced upon clients to a degree as well, and there, that some of them will come in and say, "Oh no, I don't want to use thinning scissors." But also, if it's if the tool, if that's the right tool for the job, then you can use it. Go on. I guess with clippers, like people do, there is obviously people in the world that do a very quick um, job, and it's more about quantity rather than quality, which is like it's a business model. It's worked. It's like it works. Do you know, like, and it's fine for that to do. But like for me, it's more about the quality. So I know that if I use clippers, I still have to go over with like scissor over comb to make sure it's really finessed. Sure. Just to get that polished finish, um, but I use clippers on the daily, you know, like which is cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, needs, it is an art when you can scissor over comb, almost like a skin fade. But the, it's, it's 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 impressive to get skin fade done very clean with clippers as yeah, well, isn't it? Like it's, you can and it is a different look. Like doing it with yeah. scissors is always softer. Yeah. And like, who's got time to do a skin fade with scissor over comb? Exactly. Scissor over no comb? Do you know? Yeah. What I mean? it's, it's, like, it's, it's fine if you're charging the money for that, but yeah. then not everybody's going to want to pay. And it's for cool that, for though. like video content, and it's cool for stage work and stuff. But like, yeah, like for me, get the job done. So, what's one grooming product that you use on yourself? Um, so, I would just say whatever. I, I change my style quite a lot, um, or I just bang a hat on. But like, when I do do my hair, the main thing is to create the grit and stability in there to make make it into the style that you want it to do. So, whatever that product is, it. It just needs to obviously give you a strong foundation, and then the rest just like comes from that. Yeah. 
And you, you touched on about you changing your look quite frequently. Do you, do you find that important when working with clients as well, that for you changing your look frequently? Going back to when I first started hairdressing, um, I guess what why I excelled in in the male market quicker um, is for, for me is because like I was do, styling my hair different, so I was like experiment on myself, and then then you then do that on your clients. Do you know like? Okay. Um, so I guess now that the style that I'm rocking today is is very low maintenance in in the long run, to be honest, but. It, it's probably because I've been getting a lot of guys with longer hair, so it then pushes that forward. And I, I kind of always like that, like effortless sort of vibe, rather than it really like structured with hairspray and, yeah, and really groomed back. Yeah. yeah, but like I also I, I rocked that, you know, five years ago with the, when the wet maids were in, and um, you know you had loads of barbers like rocking that sort of like old school vibe and I, I do like that like I used to do my hair like rockabilly quite a lot I, I don't know why I used to do it like that I feel like I used to put a suit on it it just used to make me feel good you know like but now I feel I'm a little bit more casual and I guess the people I think or my clients I think are cooler have got a bit of a longer sort of like effortless style so I'm, I feel like if I'm making them feel cooler about themselves like I feel like that do you feel like that those, those people have got those longer hairstyles now because you think it's cooler or have they then said they want it longer and then it's you end up doing it and then you think it's cooler? Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I tend to, I'm not like one for trends as such, I, um, I know like these things happen but I, I generally look at the individual and work out what's going to make them one look good and two feel good, you know like, and that's it really but I, it's just, I, I guess what you put out into the world, whether that's verbally, visually or whatever, like you're gonna get that. So like I've been putting a lot of like longer haired gents out on Instagram. So that is the clientele that I've been like sourcing. But I'll go through a stage of doing like skin phase all day long, do you know, like, and then that'll go out and then I'll start getting more people doing that. I, it's, it's funny, I've probably got, you know, 50-50 of some gents absolutely cropping the hair off and getting it off because it's been dead hot. And some just like bearing with and either putting a hat on like I do or like talking about their ears or whatever and just yeah, yeah. having that longer style. But I think it's there's just a lot more um, variety out there now. Yeah, and I guess it have, because obviously Instagram is so populated with photos and clients are going to be able to see that variety and have the different options available. So that's, I guess, trends are less visible really because it, the option is so broad. Yeah, there's just lots of like micro things and you find your little tribe that you want to go down and it, it all depends on like jobs, lifestyle, what we're wearing, like, you know, do you know, like, so, you take, definitely take all that into consideration. It's funny, I've got this one guy, he's, he's got similar hair to me now, he, he normally comes from work, so he's like, in work, like, clothes and stuff, and he come in one day on a Saturday, it's, it's well funny, he, he looked cool as fuck, right? So, I, I ended up um, asking him, I didn't really ask him, I threw him in the studio, I took a picture of him, and it's, it got reposted by some big brands, which is like, cool. And his now wife messaged me and was like, how the fuck did you get him to do that? And then he went on a stag do and his mates rinsed him. Like t-shirts with this picture on, <laughs> beer mats with it, a mankini with it on. Like, and even Brilliant. when they went away, that picture got put made into masks for his missus, to, all of his missus and his basically. <laughs> so I've, I've ruined that boy's life, do you know what I mean? But he looked cool and he did, he looked like, he, he proper looked cool. All the birds were like fancy in it was, it was funny. You either need to put more time into your column to make sure you can get that content and make sure it's all right with your clients, to be fair. Like, it, I didn't ask him, but we kind of just did it and it was, it was fine. He, he did feel really uncomfortable, but I put like loads of indie, he's into indie music, so I put like indie music on, banged it really loud, and, and he just kind of got him to stand there and just took pictures, like, or he sat on the floor or whatever. But I think what a lot of the time, and I'm seeing it more and more obviously with like how many people are in and out of this, this salon, that like, that is part of the appointment now, so we either need to add it on, or like that's where assistants or whoever do it, or front of house do it, or like whoever's free can do it. But generally, I like doing that myself. So, but it's also if your client's waiting, like don't do it unless you know that. Like, do you mind me taking a picture for five minutes? Like, because it does it take it, it can you can get lost in it. And it can take half an hour. Um, but yeah, I feel like and it's, it's an interesting one because the clients. If they've found you through through Instagram, 
they almost want a photo taken as well because it's yeah. it's like oh if you're posting them already on Instagram like is this happen not good enough exactly. for it so, so you have to do that, like do you fake it and just do the picture anyway and know that you're never going to post it which loads of people do or do you just not do it and and that's just it I just make sure that like when like I've got clients I've been doing for like 10 years and I've probably never taken a picture of them but then one time I've been like you know what this is like in my eyes I feel like this is one part of my best work I think like you look fine do you mind if I take a picture I think that that moment when you do ask that is more valuable than doing it every time um, but yeah we're in a world of that we need to we're little content creators every single day so yeah. and it is important but if you think about it you only really need to post one image a day so you could do a, a day of content and, and use that for a week or whatever or a month yeah, or, yeah, sure. or you just pick that one client every day to make sure that you're spending that time on it because it is important, but it's also don't let it rule your life. And yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, no, that's for sure, isn't it? So, what's the one go-to product that you're using in the shop at the moment? Um, so, the one I'm literally using on every client is a product that you actually put in dry hair, and it's like a shampoo paste, uh, like a dry shampoo paste. Um, loads of brands do it. I'm going to stick pretty brand neutral on this, um, but loads of brands do do it. But it's like one, it's not an aerosol product, which is obviously great for the environment, but two, it like just makes the grit and the texture that most people want straight away, and it's like a tiny little bit of product in your hands and you work it in. It's really like pliable, but it gives a really nice texture to finish with. Um, being a dry shampoo paste, obviously it can create a, a mattified sort of finish, which most men like, but if they've got like a, a drier hair out, finish with like a shine spray afterwards. Okay. Um, I know it's an aerosol. There is like pump action ones, which I've started using, um, but I, like it just then kind of like balances it out to like make it doesn't make it greasy or anything but it just makes it like take that edge off like the dustiness of it um, but I guess that's a, a progression of dust that quite a lot of people use but then I find them not that workable like once you put it in you can't you can't move it but the they're there yeah it's it's definitely like you put there. your hand in it's like duff, yeah stuff, isn't it? you can definitely feel it and then and then dry texture sprays, which is obviously an aerosol product, which a lot of people use um, throughout the industry as their go-to products at the end of an appointment. Um, but it's one of the things that most people don't retail. So like salon owners go mental at that. Um, but yeah, so this dry shampoo paste is like unreal. I've never actually heard of a dry shampoo paste then. So it's, 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 it's like a piece of paste, but it has a, the effect of a dry shampoo. Yeah, paste. so it, it's... it's yeah, so it's like it's like a clay texture, okay. but it's work. It's definitely like it works into your hands so easy, and it almost goes like a little bit oily. But then when you put it in the hair, it absorbs the oil. So there's the dry shampoo texture. Sure. But then not texture, but the dry shampoo like process, and then the paste from it like gives it like this like this mega texture. It's cool. It's a great, a great product. It's like I, I basically use it on everyone. Nice. And then apart from that, there's like. With products, I think the product performance in a lot of brands now is like amazing, do you know? So it then comes down to like packaging, comes down to scent, do you know? Price point has never been a thing for me. Like if it's a banging product, it will go, it will fly. Um, so yeah, so they're the things that then I always like look at. It's like the little details and yeah. That, I guess that's what clients buy into, but if you're honest, they will then just take the the products off you anyway. Yeah, hundred percent. Because if, if you're only going to sell something if you believe in it, because obviously you, the last thing you want to sell to someone that's a client of yours is something that's a dud. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I do go through phases. It's funny when I was younger, I used to watch like stylist retail products, and you you assume that they're just doing it for money, and, and some are totally they're trying to get the commission on it or whatever. But like, it's it is because styling changes, like what people are asking for and what you're wanting to do your personal development changes do you know like in what you're creating but also like as stylists we get bored do you know like so we're changing what we want to do so we're not doing the same thing obviously going back to like creating content we don't want to be repeating the same image every four weeks from someone or maybe just once you've done the 20 different angles that you can do on a hair like taking a picture so yeah for me it's definitely like just creating that content and, and changing the styles and, and adapting. Also, what it keeps you entertained, it keeps your client entertained, which is the main thing. Too. That's what I was going to say. The main thing is, is keeping them entertained, isn't it? Because I guess the price point you're at as well, 
the client is going to want to have that variation of, of to how to style their hair from day to day as well, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, totally. And, 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 and again, like when I cut hair, I always try and make it as, as versatile as possible. I like things to grow out really, really natural. I don't like any like harsh lines in there unless there's a proper reason for it or if um, the clients are going to come back every week for me to make sure that's super sharp. But like where we're based in London, like clients come for like an in-between haircut and they'll come for a full haircut, but they're not going to come every single week, do you know? Unless, like, that only really happens, I think, unless you, like, live outside the salon, basically. Do you know, like, it's quite excessive. Yeah. Or you've got an event on. Yeah, completely, completely. Like a footballer. <laughs> What's the one tip that you would give to your client? I would say, make sure that whenever you apply product, um, to, like, have, like, an even distribution throughout the hair, just so, like every single hair is getting covered in what you're wanting to do so then you've got full control of the style that you wanted to create um, and also put back your appointments <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like that one because and yeah so many times when clients will just load it in at the front as well won't they and then you end up just having just in between us yeah full, full on something about Mary <laughs> very much so very yeah. much so I, mean, I, I, I used to um, work for this dude when I first moved to London called Matt Waller he's, he's got a salon called Electric and he did this like YouTube, like YouTuber before it was like even a thing. Um, it must have been right at the start, but yeah, he, he taught him to basically look away from the mirror and like rub the products right into your hands, look away from the mirror and apply it away from the mirror because then you uh, go in with like a sense of feeling rather than visual. So then you will cover it and then you come back and then you tweak visually, which was like, so it's stuck with me, you know, like, and that's why I then. Repeat basically to my clients. What's your favourite haircut at the moment? I would say Serge from Kasabian. Um, I just, I just think he's fucking cool. Anyway, like most people in bands have got a sort of swag about them, and and it's just got this like yeah effortlessly cool sort of vibe. It really is like into longer styles for me at the minute. Do you know like? But yeah, it just depends on the, on the individual. Yeah, and I guess he's he's very much got a swagger and a, a way about him that you have to have to be able to pull off something like that. Yeah, don't you? Course, it's, yeah. it's, you have to own it. Yeah. You can't let the haircut wear you. Do you know? No, that? completely. And it's he very much that that's him, isn't it? Where having the haircut, like how he just has it there, that is very much him, and sort of personifies the band, doesn't it? And it's sort of, it's the whole character is the haircut, isn't it? Completely. Yeah. Yeah. You've obviously done a lot of work with bands at festivals and then at different gigs. In terms of then of the hair that you're doing with them, is do you feel they sort of you have to give them a great haircut, or is it more that whatever they have is sort of it works with them and they're cool enough to carry it off? There is a certain element of that. There's a lot of bands that rock DIY haircuts, and and to be honest, like they can pull it off because of whether it's the genre of music they're playing or just like they're totally comfortable with it themselves. Um, so yeah, they pull it off like that. But one hundred percent, if I'm backstage doing doing someone's hair. Sometimes you've not got a lot of time, so you'll do minimal just to make sure that what you do do is, is perfect. Um, and again, sometimes you get pulled in to do like artist's hair because they're being filmed or there's like a special occasion or they're being awarded like with a disc or whatever, do you know, like when they're on stage. So it's, it's really like time dependent what you're doing it for, but obviously you always want to do your best, right? Um, the one thing I would say is don't change someone's hair before they go on stage, as in not start, like not as in cut, just as styling. I remember I, I changed this, uh, my mate Lee, he's called Lee Wilson, he's in a band called Death of Honor. I changed his quiff the other way because it looked better, and as soon as he walked on the stage, he put his hand through his hair the wrong way, and he just had this like, Mohican thing when normally he's got this like little groomed quiff normally he, and he obviously I was in the crowd I couldn't do anything I wasn't going to run on and be like yeah it's like the uncoolest thing to do you know like but it, it just made me laugh because we were chatting about it all backstage and then as soon as we went on he just did it the fucking opposite way and I'm like <laughs> and just then ruined it actually, yeah. yeah it was cool like, we'd, we were doing we were, it, that was actually sponsored by a brand and they they like sent us in and we filmed it and I even got one of the guys cutting another guy's hair and we like have done that, it was like it was joked. But doing hair backstage is, is you know, you, there's a lot of waiting around, you're not priority, you have this like anticipation and this energy that you think it's gonna be amazing and unless I found unless I'm like mates with the band, it's not fun. Okay. So like I I really like to become mates with the people with anyone that I'm cutting, 
because then like you go for dinner with them you'll be in their dressing room like at the right moment you know you'll be drinking beers with them and stuff like that and having a laugh but otherwise you're in a room on your own waiting for someone to come in and have their haircut and you could be waiting four to five hours do you know like so I would say take something to be getting on with because yeah you can be waiting a long time yeah absolutely then you touched on obviously styling the quiff the wrong way or with the, you then styled it the way that it should have been but do you find that then the best results is to, to style it with the way that is the natural way or the way that the, the person would feel comfortable pushing it or is more used to pushing well, it well if you're doing it just before they go on stage <laughs> do it the way they've always done it do you know like because it, it just fucked it up but I would say again when I'm cutting hair I always do it so it's versatile it can go both ways you just got to like explain to the client or whoever that you're doing that one way will be flatter because it's going with the grain of the hair and the other way will have more volume and like more natural movement in there so and I generally like like the more natural movement you know like rather than being super tight and super flat yeah. Um, but yeah like it's funny because when you add that to a client at the end of the appointment they're like what do you mean I'm going to quiff it in a way like it's like the end of the world but you're just like mate you can wear it we can do it this way I can move it back like it's not like stuck in position and then at the end like I would then you know use a hairspray at the end to like lock it in you know not on my own hair but like with yeah for sure for sure okay brilliant where do you see hair going within the next year or so then and future trends with that falling out (laughs) (laughs) Um, mate it's just like I think it, everything just gets repeated anyway, do you know? Yeah, it's all cycle, isn't it? Yeah, like, there's certain stuff that, that are out on social media at the minute that's not my taste, but like, I just put my blinkers on and, and go with what I'm into. And, and I, I tend to try and do that anyway with hairdressing because I feel like everyone's quite easily influenced, whether they like it or not, whether it's subliminal or like, like subconsciously or consciously, do you know? Like, so I try and not look at many people's work so I can then be inspired by other stuff, more lifestyle stuff, I would say. Colour is like becoming huge. Like the amount of gents now that are in salon getting their hair coloured, like obviously scalp bleaching is, is huge. And I think gents look wicked with the root as well, like almost. I would definitely go more Kurt Cobain than Hanson, do you know, like as yeah. a reference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, and I, like obviously like fashion colours and stuff like that is like men are, men are rocking that and you can um, I know like the lead singer of Bring Me Arise and he had like the band logo on like stenciled into his hair and, and at one point but it's, it's again it's something that's really short lived when you're doing like fashion colours anyway so it's, it's like it's fine but the yeah colours are a huge part well, and even on a real like diluted commercial level just to like camouflage grey hairs and and the, I use colour as well a lot to like change the texture of people's hair so sometimes I might need it to be a little bit grittier because it's like it's too like it, it's too fine or it's too like stray and it's got nothing to it so like pre-lightening it a, a little bit putting a little bit of bleach in it will like grit it up a little bit and adds texture to it whereas like some people come and they've got really coarse thick like dense hair and putting an actual like men's camo colour on that's meant to camouflage grey hair even if you don't have it it changes the pH balance of the hair so it actually makes it feel softer and like more more like workable for them so you see and that's like that last one that I mentioned is like a service you can do in about 10 minutes if that that's not something that's ever talked about really within the, the men's hair world specifically that's not something I've ever heard about dyeing someone's hair to change the texture of it that makes complete sense yeah. and actually that would that would help a lot of clients be able to style their hair in a, in a different way or get rid of a problem that they've actually got then, wouldn't it but if you, if you think if one hair colour is one texture so it, and it and it looks like one texture it, like it looks like Lego and like for my hair for instance yeah it's like it's kind of a mousy sort of tone loads of women love it but it's it's a really hard tone to create in the hair and but for me I think it's like one dimensional and I actually think that I need like a little bit of like pre-lightener in there but again I kind of just want to do it myself just to have a bit of DIYness to it because I think if it looks too polished on a guy it can look really feminine and that's absolutely great if that individual wants to look more feminine but most men don't want to look more feminine you know especially for me that's don't have facial hair or anything like that so I do want and also with like the DIYness effect to it 
it's actually really hard to teach because we're taught to create something so perfect all the time, but then to actually then go and break that rule and go, I actually want it to look a bit fucked up. It's, fine. it's really hard to get head over. Lots of practice. Especially when people are going from that. It looks really, I think like a really clean bleach, excuse me, looks like amazing on like skin fades and stuff like that, and then even like really long, but if it's all one color, it just looks like a mass, yeah. rather than like texture or definition or depth or whatever you're trying to do. Color's really, really important. Do you see that being introduced more into men's hair barbershops or men's hairdressers, or do you still see that staying within the hairdressing? No, it, I, I see, it's already in the industry loads, I think. Like, it, I, I see loads of like barbers getting involved with colouring, and even if they're not the ones doing it, they'll collaborate with, like, I was going to say a girl, because generally I just say that, but they're not really, but like, like, so barbers are collaborating with like other individuals that are special, specialising in colour, and they will then, they will do the cut, they'll do the colour, they'll do that, but then, once they've done it a few times, like, I'm sure the barbers will, or hairdressers that don't colour will be like, do you know what, I'm going to give this a go, and mm. this, it's, I think, it's not crept into the educational system yet of like teaching men's colouring. That's where I come. Yeah, nice. Okay, so that's the, the, the avenue for. I the think next so. Time. Yeah, I think that's like there's a there's a market that's not being penetrated yet. Like yeah, every other, every other industry is yet, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Quick fire now then. When should clients come back into the shop? I would say every four weeks. 100% and like because it just grows out and if it's a shorter haircut I get my gents to come in in between the haircuts so every two weeks for a little gents to inside it so I won't touch the top at all and they don't like get it washed or anything like that then it's just in do like the neck hair facial hair everything like that round the ears and then they get the full do on the thing so beard maintenance beard maintenance I would always 100% keep it natural I very rarely like a line process in any of the haircut, whether it's beard or all the hair. Um, I would get a really good home clipper to make sure you've just got a guard to like go down. And then I would come back into the salon and get, so when you're doing the gentleman mentality, that's where I would do the beard maintenance after that. Okay. And eyebrows? How would you do, how would you yeah, go about that? Mate, hair that grows in weird places it's never grown before. So at home, I wouldn't do eyebrows yourself at home. Like again, get that in your gentleman mentality when you come into the, the barber shop, the salon. And ear hair, you could do that with a little like trimmer if you really wanted to. Um, nose hair, one hundred percent. You get these like little things called roommates where I get them from eBay. Literally stick up your nose, twist it, it cuts it down, and it's done. And then I would let your like your professional to like do the waxing and, and pull it all out when they when they do that. The main thing I guess for like beard maintenance as well is like. Clients never really do the top lid, and I just think it's like such an odd thing because that's like what I would probably notice. I know I have facial hair, so I can't really comment, but like that, and it's quite easy to just go across in the little straight line to like do your little top lid. So, would you go to the lip line? Would you go slightly above the lip line, below it? I would just, if I was doing it at home, I would take anything that was like hanging down, yeah, hanging down, yeah, and then I'd let the professional do the rest, but um, but yeah, I would, I would. I prefer blending everything out, so I would teach my clients how to do that as well. Um, obviously, it's easy to put a straight line in, I think. Um, I used to be obsessed with putting like these like Boston hairlines in and everything like that, but for me, I just think it just grows out really odd, and it looks like you've stuck it on someone's head. So I prefer everything to be softer, and it, and it does genuinely grow out better, like I know for a fact. Um, so I always try and teach my clients. The only thing that I would maybe put a line in is like through the, like, the beard cheat line, if someone's got especially like fair hair or it's a bit patchier, by putting a, sh a line strong in there or taking it a little bit lower, that can make it look more like a thicker, denser beard. But um, for me, it's, it's a lot softer. I hate them little jock straps, man. And yeah, like, yeah. But culturally, it's different. Like if I had a beard and, and I had sharp lines on it, I'm not very chiseled, I've not got a jawline, it just look odd. Right, so blending would like suit my face shape better, but some people are very chiselled and like they can pull it off. But I just, I just think it looks, I don't know, a little bit like cartoon esque, but not. In a, I don't know if like, it can even ever be a good thing. But, like, yeah, I know what you mean with that because then it is almost a little bit drawn on, isn't it? Then it just then it's, it's super defined. And really, people you know? do draw it on with airbrushes, you know, like yeah, airbrushes. Yeah, yeah, it's like that little trick the axe that they did. 
and they basically did the haircut first, put fibres on, and then went with the axe and a hammer. Oh, is that what they did with it? Yeah. Right, okay. It looked like it'd been cut, cut off. Fuck off. Like, yeah, because I was watching that, I was like, what was going on there? Especially yeah. when like hair grows down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know, yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, so that, it's just hair fibres, man. But that's, that's the trickery of like, content, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's yeah. cool, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Kai, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time. The shop is amazing, or the, the salon is amazing. Thank you for letting us use your space, and thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Catch you next time. Cheers. Thank you, Kai. If you did enjoy the episode, there's plenty more over on my channel with other industry experts. There's going to be lots more coming. They're going to be uploaded each week. There's plenty of other videos of hair, beard, and grooming tips, as mentioned before. So if you got any value from today, you might want to consider subscribing just so you know when all the videos are coming out. If you want to send me any messages at all, all my social media channels are just there, and they're all going to be linked below. So feel free to send me a message on any of them. Any questions at all, that's where to direct them to. Thank you so much for watching today. Much love, Elliot.